Thank you, and you may be seated. <coughs> Friends, we have gathered here to praise God and to witness to our faith as we celebrate the life of Lillian Parrott. We come together in our grief, acknowledging our human loss. May God grant us grace that in pain we may find comfort, in sorrow, hope, and in death, resurrection. For dying, Christ destroyed our death. Rising, Christ restored our life. Christ will come again in glory. As in baptism, Lillian put on Christ. So in Christ may she now be clothed with glory. Here and now, dear friends, we are God's children. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Those who have this hope purify themselves, even as Christ is pure. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and I am life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, yet shall they live. Whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. I died, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Because I live, you shall live also. Amen. Will you pray with me? Eternal God, we praise you for the great company of all those who have finished their course in faith and now rest from their labor. We praise you for those dear to us whom we name in our hearts before you. And especially we praise you for Lillian, whom you have graciously received into your presence. To all of these grant your peace. Let perpetual light shine upon them and help us so to believe where we have not seen that your presence may lead us through our years and bring us at last with them into the joy of your home not made with hands but eternal in the heavens. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I ask you to stand as you're able. The hymn is number 110 in the blue hymnals. A mighty fortress is our God.
Hear now these words from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Have you not known, have you not heard, the Lord is an everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youth will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Amen. If you look in your bulletins, you will find the words of the 23rd Psalm. I'll ask that we uh, read this together, please. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Hear now these words from the vision of John the Revelator in Revelation chapter 21. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, the sea was no more. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them as their God. They will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Amen. Our hymn now is number 117, O God, our help in ages past. Once again, I'll ask you to stand as your aid.
seated. Share with you now some words from the Gospel of John, the 14th chapter. This particular passage comes from Jesus' farewell discourses with his disciples on the night that he gave himself up for us. Jesus had much to tell his disciples. He had much to tell us as his time before the crucifixion was drawing short. And so you feel the urgency in Jesus' voice in these words and the eternal importance they have for each one of us. Hear now these words from John, the 14th chapter. Jesus said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again, and I will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. I have said these things to you while I am still with you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not let them be afraid. Amen. My honor now to ask Jimbo Perry to come forward, who has some words of eulogy and remembrances this morning. Let's pray. Lord, it's an honor to be here to celebrate Aunt William and to um, just remember some of the lessons that she has taught us. Um, I pray, Lord, that the words that I share would be used for that purpose and to also remind us that um, we're on the same journey and that we have the privilege of knowing that we're unconditionally loved um, by you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, in Jesus' name, amen. I first want to um, thank the family for having modeled what unconditional love looks like. I think I've, our whole family, I'm um, Aunt Leon's cousin, and we, I had my great-grandmama was her grandmama who lived with her, I think, for about 22 years or maybe more before she got married. And well before, and then before great-grandma Perry died. But we have some real consistencies in our families, and extended family. One of them is Psalm 118, 24. This is the day the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Another is 1 Corinthians chapter 13. It really talks about God's unconditional love for us and you know we as people want to try to understand that don't we we want to understand what unconditional love looks like we all have this great desire to be fully known and fully loved um, that's the way we've been created and you as a family have really modeled that for us for years and years and so we thank you for the way that you cared for your mom and loved her um, for hours and hours and un untold hours that none of us can even, even imagine. And I pray that, um, I know I was inspired, uh, Jeanette, by you when we had our mo my mother-in-law come live with us and it really impacted our life. So I thank you for that so, so much. What I want us to do today is I want us to do something just a little bit different for a funeral. Um, often at a funeral, what happens is, is you go and you think about, well, how was Granny the last year or five years or 10 years of her life? When, when you look around in here, um, there are lots and lots of empty chairs because there've been so many people who've gone before her. I mean, we got to look at the wedding pictures the other night, and there was a huge crowd. This place was covered with satin all over the place. There were, I mean, it was packed out. And at Lee and, and Uncle Clifton, you all are kind of the last of that generation 
By the way, Uncle Clifton did catch the biggest fish on his 98th birthday. So that's a big deal. So he's still going strong. But so what I want us to do is um, I want us to imagine Aunt Lillian at different ages. And I want us to think about her. And I'm going to use words rather than sentences um, for us to remember. And some of these words might make sense to you and some may not. Um, but they're words that I've picked up uh, from the family as I've heard them uh, talk over the last few days and over my 66 years. Um, one thing about uh, Aunt Leanne's house and Aunt Susie's house before, you could always hear what they were talking about. You didn't have to worry. You know, they, they, my, one of my earliest memories was being on the floor below uh, at, the Chris, at the dinner table for Christmas or Thanksgiving, and uh, there was a lot of loud women talking. It was a good thing. But I also want to look at it from a perspective of Aunt Lee and where she is now. The scripture tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. For now I know in part, but then I shall know as even also I am known. So Aunt Lee has crossed over to the other side. To the other side of glory and we're still stuck on this side so there are a lot of things that we don't see and understand that according to scripture and to the word of God that was read by the pastor those are things that she understands now and it is a place where there is not pain and suffering and tears or heartache but it's a place of great reunion when I got to walk over to see Jeanette the other night, she was sharing about a few family members that had kind of cried when they heard of Aunt Lee's passing. And, and Jeanette said, you know, we, what she said was, she said, you know, we don't need to be crying right now because Aunt Lee is finally where she wants to be, has wanted to be all the way since 1961 on July the 8th. She is back with Rendell. She's back with Clifton, with her big brother Bobby, with Marion. And it's a, it's a place of reunion. So even though we today cannot see that, she does, according to Scripture. And I, I don't understand it all the way. I, maybe if some of y'all have a full understanding, come tell me about it. I see what it says in the Bible, and the Bible leaves some things so we don't totally understand, which really helps us exercise our faith, right? So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to... Um, Think about her 35,322 days. That's a lot of days, isn't it, that she had? I kind of put that on the computer. That's how many days it said that she was alive here. And I want us to think back to the time when she had, she was a little baby. And then I want us to think back to the time when she kind of began to grow up. And, and she was a teenager. And her wedding right here in this place. And then when she welcomed babies into the world. And then over time, grandbabies. And then the last 10 years. And we'll use some words for those two. So um, use your imagination as I say these words. And I hope uh, that you will enjoy them as much as I have enjoyed making this list. which all reflect, I believe, an amazing life. February 27th, 1925. Baby sister, her mama Susie, her daddy, Dr. West, hold, rock. Big brother Bobby, no longer here. Brother Clifton, Leg Perthes disease. Resilient. Pony cart. Poncho and his gang. Speck. Carrying her to school. Rabbit tobacco. <laughs> Beach. Evans Street. Teenager. Fun. Comet sailboat. 
stuck on the bridge or under the bridge. Great Depression. St. Mary's. Sweetbriar. Piano. War. Hat Parrot. June 6, 1944. Marion. War Hero. Home from the war. Why did I make it home and my friends did not? Be nice to that boy. Not that nice. <laughs> Wedding here. Satin floor. Honeymoon. Nassau. Wife. December 18th, 1949. Arendel. Rock Hole. February 14th, 1952. Clifton Rock Hole. <coughs> Susan Baby Girl Rock. Sweetbriar Circle, July 8th, 1961, Resilient, July 16th, 1961, God's Order, Jeanette, Rock, Hope, Lily B. Rock, hold. Arundel Parrot Academy, 1964. Dreams. Carpool. Red Camara. Animals. Doc, Tony, William, Tinkerbell, Lady, Headache, Butterscotch, Diggy Bird, Snow White, Jet Black, April, Henry, Henrietta, Rabbits, Alligators, Monkey, Dot, Dot, Dot. Star, Duke, Vivi. Duke basketball. Food. <laughs> Granny. Rock. Hold. Carpool. <laughs> Bible studies. October 27th, 2000. Resilient. It's always better to be safe than sure. No matter how bad things are, they can always get worse. What have you been eating good? <laughs> what do you know? Listening ear. Engaged conversation. St. Jeanette. March 5th. 2015. Resilient. Food. Oysters. Hard shell crabs. Soft shell crabs. Stone crab claws. Carl Bay Club. Bingo. Seafood buffet. Bridge club. Dinner club. Books, books, books. K. 
counting bows. Resilient. 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 Mm. It was passed down to the whole family. Amazing life. Amazing legacy. Arundel Parrot Academy. Susan Kempe. Charles, Bryce, Spencer, West, Arenda, William, Era, Wilder, Forrest, Lily, Jeanette, Charles, Madison, Forrest, Lily, Marion, Mark, David, Francois, Rosalia. So, what is Leon's message to us? Amazing life, amazing legacy, and now amazing grace. Oh man, thank you so much. Will you pray with me? <clears throat> God of love, we thank you for all with which you have blessed us even to this day. For the gift of joy and days of health and strength. For the gifts of your abiding presence and promise in days of pain and grief. We praise you for home and friends for our baptism and place in your church with all who have faithfully lived and died. Above all else, we thank you for Jesus, who knew our griefs, who died our death, who rose for our sake, who lives and prays for us. And as he taught us, so now we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our final hymn is number 712. I sing a song of the saints of God. Please stand as you are able.
following the benediction and dismissal with blessing, the family is going to uh, invite you into a time of visitation with them, greetings uh, as you uh, will want to come and meet with them. But instead of having a formal line, they have asked that they will be sort of interspersed throughout the sanctuary in little groups. And uh, you just feel free to come as one big family uh, as you feel uh, led and able. Let us close now this service with these words of blessing and dismissal. Now may the God of peace, who brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, make you complete in everything good, so that you may do his will, working among us that which is pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Thank you.